Today I'm going to teach you all about the science of chronic pain. So here are 10 things that you probably didn't know about chronic pain. And spoiler alert, they are encouraging facts about chronic pain. So stay tuned. If you have chronic pain, hopefully we can give you a positive message, a message of hope. I'm Dr. Anthony Davis. Let's look at the research on chronic pain. Number one, the first thing that you probably don't know about pain is what pain actually is. So in terms of how the brain works, pain is not a sensation. It's kind of weird. Here's the definition of pain. An unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or, and here's the key, or potential tissue damage. So first of all, pain is basically anything that's unpleasant. Now it could be a sensation, but it could be an emotional experience. It could be associated with tissue damage, or it could be associated with anything that your brain perceives as a threat. So pain is basically any unpleasant thing. To put it really simply, if you think it's pain, it is pain, but it does not always have a physical cause. So pain is an experience, not just a sensation. Let's explore that further. So number two, the thing that you probably don't know about chronic pain is that pain does not always have a physical cause. You probably think that things like disc herniations, labral tears, posture, alignment, spinal curvature, etc., bad exercise form, are you doing your exercises wrong and is that causing your pain? You probably think that all of these things are related to pain, but when we actually look at the research, we find that that is not the case. For example, let's say you have chronic low back pain. Well, disc herniations and disc degeneration or osteoarthritis in the spine is very, very common in people who have no pain whatsoever. If you take an MRI of people's spines, you will find that people with no pain have disc degeneration and disc bulges and disc herniations and protrusions and osteoarthritis, all of those things. So this study looked at that. So if you have one of those things, that does not doom you to a lifetime of pain because plenty of people have those things and don't have pain. Well, what about posture? Well, when we look at the research on posture, we find that there is no relationship between posture, spinal curves, pelvic tilt, or even core strength and pain. And by the way, that includes leg length uh, discrepancies and you know, are your hips on level, all that stuff. There's no relationship between those things and pain. So if you're a little off, if your posture is not the best, if you slouch, if you're you know, a little bit curvy in the spine, it's not really a big deal. It's probably not causing your pain. Okay, but what about exercise form? What if you lift with your back instead of your legs? What if you round your back while you're lifting? Isn't that bad for your low back? Well, again, we have uh, a lot of research here looking at rounding your spine while lifting, looking at um, lifting using your back or versus a squat lift. And we find that there are many different options for lifting. They do not increase the stresses on the spinal discs, so they are safe. And we see that actually, when you start to get in your head and you start overthinking exercise, you actually become a worse mover in the first place. So you actually become worse at performing exercise when you overthink it versus just trying to perform the exercise. So don't overthink it. Number three, the third thing that you probably don't know is that pain is very, very weird. So here are three examples of how weird pain can be. So here was a story of a man who had a metal rod embedded in his arm. Um, I believe this was actually the uh, turning lever from a car, he got in a car accident, and he lived for decades with this metal rod embedded in his arm, and he had zero pain. No pain at all. Now eventually, after uh, many decades, he did eventually start to have pain and then he did get the rod removed. But the point is, he went for decades with a, <laughs> a rod in it, embedded, like impaled, stabbed through his arm <laughs> and he had no pain. So tissue damage, things that are damaged in your body do not always cause pain because pain is not a sensation. Pain is an experience. 
Uh, it happens in the brain. All, all, all forms of pain happen in the brain and your brain decides what information it wants to ignore and what it wants to pay attention to. The next example is that visual illusions can amplify or diminish pain. So here we had a study that looked at people with hand pain and they looked at their hand that was painful and they looked at it through binoculars that made their hand look bigger. It made the problem, the pain, seem bigger. Sure enough, you ask those people, how bad is your pain? And the people who were looking through binoculars reported that their pain was worse. And then when we flipped the binoculars and looked at them the other way, so then the hand looks smaller, then those people, it made the problem smaller and they actually reported feeling less pain uh, in correlation with seeing that the painful area of the body was actually smaller visually. So visual illusions can change your perception of pain. By the way, there's a study I did not include in here that looked at colors as well. And we found that associations with red colors created more pain and associated, uh, associations with blue colors um, resulted in less pain. So even the colors of the room that you're in could influence your pain. And then lastly, we have this fake headache machine. So researchers hooked this headache machine up to people's heads. It, it wasn't even plugged in. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It does absolutely nothing. It's just a little hat basically, but it looks like it's got all these wires going into it. And then there was a little knob and they, and they said to people when they put it on, yeah, this device may cause a headache. That's all they said. And that was enough for people to say, oh, this might cause a headache. And then they asked people afterwards, did you have a headache while we were doing the experiment? And they said, yes, yes I did. And what's more is there was a knob and the researchers would turn the intensity of the fake machine, right? They'd turn the knob up. And the higher they turned the knob, the more, the worse the headache that people reported was. So these were people who were having an actual headache in association with a fake machine and that headache got worse the more the person turned the knob up. Pretty crazy. So your expectations, your beliefs impact pain and can actually create pain. Real, tangible, you feel it, it's pain. Number four, chronic pain is an emotion. Chronic pain is not a sensation. This study looked at the MRIs of people's brains who had acute pain, meaning they had recently developed pain um, versus chronic pain, meaning they had lived with pain for a long time. And what they found is that the brain regions associated with a raw sensation were very active in the people who had acute pain or they um, just recently developed pain. But the people who had chronic pain that had lived with it for a long time, the brain regions associated with sensation were not very active at all. In fact, the brain regions associated with emotional processing were much more strongly active. So as far as your brain is concerned, the experience of pain, and these people, you ask both groups, the acute pain group and the chronic pain group, you ask them, are you in pain? And they say, yes, I'm in pain. It hurts right here. But the people who had chronic pain it was an emotion in their brain, not a sensation. And as an example, just look at this, a broken heart. Think about it. A broken heart, if you've ever had your heart broken, it hurts like hell. But your body is not physically damaged. The experience is absolutely real. And if you decide that it is pain, if it feels painful to you, it is pain. So there is such a thing as emotional pain. That is a real thing. Number five is that you can have false alarms. So there is a thing called central sensitization and peripheral sensitization. And what that means is that your nerves become extra sensitive compared to what we would consider normal nerves. So it takes less stimulus to create a signal in them. So less of a uh, stimulus creates pain for you. So they become chemically sensitized. Now, what I liken this is to a glass break alarm. Now your brain basically has a pain alarm system, 
but if it was a glass break alarm, you would want your glass break alarm system in your home to only go off with very, very loud noises, such as if somebody were to bash a window in. But with chronic pain, you can have central sensitization and peripheral sensitization, which means that your glass break alarm goes off if anybody in the house, you know, sneezes, right? It goes off too easily. Your pain alarm system is extra sensitive. So you have an experience of pain because it is chemically sensitive, not because you have an actual glass break. Nobody broke the window, right? You didn't break anything, you didn't damage anything, but your nerves are chemically sensitized. Um, so you feel pain more easily. Number six is that weightlifting and cardiovascular exercise definitely can improve pain and function. Now, here are a bunch of different exercises. Now is a good time for me to point out that the citations that I'm providing for all of these slides are for various types of conditions. There are many conditions that cause chronic pain that could be things like fibromyalgia, it could be osteoarthritis, it could be um, some kind of neural condition. There are many causes is my point. And these, uh, extra, these studies that I'm referencing um, cover a wide range of different causes of chronic pain. So it's not just fibromyalgia or just osteoarthritis. I tried to select studies from a broad group of causes and show you that exercise does improve the pain levels and function in people with chronic pain. This is really important because a lot of people come to me in the clinic and they have pain and they're nervous about exercising because they think it's going to hurt their body, um, especially picking up heavy weights. They really think that that's gonna flare them up, um, but these studies showed that picking up heavy weights actually was very helpful for people with chronic pain and fibromyalgia. Um, I, I just noticed that people, when I, when I see people in clinic with fibromyalgia, a lot of them are really nervous about heavy weights. So I just want you to know that it's totally safe and it'll help you with your pain. Hey, just so you know, um, these slides are available to download if you're a member on my website. Uh, you can be a member for as little as $5 a month and it really helps support this channel so I can keep making these videos and helping you to understand the science of fitness, yoga, and meditation. Number seven, okay, graded exposure is really key. So graded exposure improves pain levels. Now what that means is that if you have chronic pain and you're trying to get into exercise and exercise seems to flare things up, well, you gotta take things nice and slow. You gotta start with something really easy and then really slowly work your way up to something slightly harder and then slightly harder. And then eventually you could do something that's very difficult. So if you have ambitions to be able to do a lot of running or lift heavy weights or do some kind of intense exercise, you can do it, but you need to be really patient and you need to really slowly over months and years, I'm talking, it's not gonna happen overnight. If you're really patient though with graded exposure, you can eventually ease your way into more and more difficult things. Okay, number eight, pain during exercise is safe. So this study looked at chronic pain specifically, and they were looking at whether or not we should be exercising with rehab exercises to the point where you feel pain. And what they found that was that with people with chronic pain, if you push into the pain a little bit, you actually get better results um, in terms of functional improvements, strength, and reduced pain levels. So it is not only safe, to push into a little bit of pain, but it's actually beneficial. Now don't force it. This is why in clinic, I use a pain traffic light. And we say mild pain, green light, moderate pain is a yellow light, and a red light is severe pain. So that's like a scale of one to 10, right? So just divide that scale of one to 10 into thirds. So we got like mild, moderate, severe, and if it's a green light, it's a green light. It's fine, it's totally safe. Uh, the yellow light would be kind of moderate pain. Don't do anything more intense than that, but it's probably okay to do yellow light stuff. Just don't try to beat the yellow light. And then red light stuff means don't stop exercising completely, but if you're doing squats with weight, then maybe today just do it without the weight. Right? So just do something a little easier for today. So I like the pain traffic light. Number nine, here we go. Cognitive behavioral therapy. So this helps. Having counseling helps. 
It absolutely does. And especially that makes sense because chronic pain does have a strong mind-body connection. There is a strong emotional component. So a lot of times, I, I like cognitive behavioral therapy and it does better in the research than other forms of therapy because uh, cognitive behavioral therapy tends to be very goal-focused. So it's it's not about you know digging into your childhood and uh, you know telling you all the things that are wrong with your psyche, like old you know Freudian um, or Jungian psychology, psychoanalytic therapy. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy is very goal-focused, so it's going to get you on your feet and help you come up with an action plan to actually carry out the plan of exercise or nutrition or good sleep or whatever whatever your plan for rehab is. You need a teammate. You need somebody to talk to. And if you've lived with pain for a long time, again, you just need somebody to talk to. You need somebody in your corner. Um, so cognitive behavioral therapy can help reduce catastrophizing, which is you um, thinking that your pain is the end of the world, your condition is the end of the world, and that makes pain a lot worse, by the way. Um, it helps you improve your coping skills. So if you do have a flare-up, help. hopefully you can get through it faster. And it improves your mental health, which is gonna improve pain, and it can help to reduce disability. Um, now, therapy alone is not going to be the solution, but therapy should be part of the solution. It is a helpful part of the solution. And then lastly, number 10, education helps. Um, now, it's important to note, though, that education helps in combination with other treatments, such as exercise. Education alone is not an effective treatment. You can't just think your way out of pain, but the education helps so that you know it's safe to exercise and then you actually go and exercise. You know it's safe to do a specific type of exercise. You know it's safe to do this. Um, you know that it's not damaging if you have a little bit of pain. Um, those types of things so that you can actually carry out your rehab plan. So um, all these studies down here show that education should be a part of your rehab. It should not be the only part of your rehab. And I wanna point out that education, you better get good education because right now there's a lot of bad information on chronic pain. So some people think that they are educated about their chronic pain, but all they have is terrible, terrible misinformation from maybe forums or Facebook, or they Google it and they found you know um, WebMD or something like that and they found a lot of really bad information about chronic pain. So specifically, education about neurophysiology um, seems to help more than other forms of education. So actually understanding how pain happens in your nervous system and in your brain seems to help people a lot. Um, so make sure to pair your education with a good actionable plan. Hey, by the way, if you wanna work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I do coaching with people all over the world online. I help you come up with a plan so that you can take all the pieces of a good rehab program and make them into an actionable plan. This is just a snapshot from my website and I really do believe this. You can kick the shit out of chronic pain and get strong as fuck. So absolutely, you can beat this thing. And if you want some help, I'm in your corner. You can book a free discovery call with me anytime. Just go to my website. So the most important message is don't panic. You're gonna be okay, okay? Don't panic because seriously, I mean it. You are going to be okay. You can beat this thing. I'm here to help if you want. Leave questions in the comments. I'll see you in another video.